He or she has you know, double do. Not only do they have to make this transition, but they're the one instigating the transition to make it happen. I've also seen cases where maybe there was sort of a team who went off and started in the area and then managers and leaders above engineering managers saw the outcome or the success that came from this proof of concept pilot team. And all of a sudden they're super rah, rah about it, but the rest of the organization, including the engineering managers or managers is like, wait, what, what, what are you? And so they're now trapped in the middle of this transition. So I do think sometimes they can lead it. Sometimes they can be agile and, part of the conversation agiled. yes you've been <laughs> agile <laughs> part of part of the it. conversations you may need to have may very consider may be very different if they were part of the transition than if they feel like it was done to them right you're going to have some hurt feelings if you weren't part of that transition i think it gets back to some things that i know that Steve McConnell has written about change management and, and the change model, right? And and I think going to an agile approach without understanding um, your existing uh, personnel structure, what are people currently doing in their roles now, and how do they move into a different role, or, or what do we what do we expect out of them, right? And and if you don't make that explicit, you don't set some vision for for folks, then you're gonna. Have, I think you're gonna have problems. I think that's to to Amon's point. If you don't, if you don't have a role in mind for that engineering manager when you make that transition, I mean, I think the development staff, the product owners, the scrub masters, you probably have that because it's pretty well described uh, in in the agile literature. But the engineering manager is sort of this, you know, it doesn't necessarily have a direct mapping. So. To, to make sure that you do that when you plan to make an agile transition, I think is, is important. Maybe that gets to that point. One of the simplest things I like to encourage is changing job titles. Uh, most, and this is not always working because HR has a big say in this if it's a medium to larger size company. But just to let people know something's different. It's not the same thing. You're not just engineering manager old style today and injury manager, new style tomorrow, but nothing's really changed. I think saying I've taken on a new title, I'm maybe shuffling the organization a little bit so it feels different can aid. It's one of my change agents there to help aid that kind of change. Because as Jenny said early in our conversation, people have built up years of habits sometimes, ways of getting things done. Now there's some new ways What's going to happen when stress happens? What's going to happen when deadlines come up? I'm going to go back to my old ways because I got stuff done before and I need to get stress stuff test. done now. Yep, exactly. Well, and I think that's a really interesting point. I'm thinking about a group I worked with. In general, everything worked great, but if there were major issues, different people in the organization were used to going to different people for different things. And all of a sudden, the kind of agile structure that worked great when things were okay totally broke down because under stress, the paths would go back to the old paths. So I think that is always something interesting to look out for, and you probably will need to talk about it through your journey of, oh, wait, look, <laughs> we've been going to the product owners generally, but when there's stress, we go to the engineering managers and all of a sudden they're now activating on the teams and now the teams are getting pulled in two directions. Wait, this is probably a problem. <laughs> right. That's very true. When you're going through this transition, I do think it's important to talk to the people who are engineering managers and to understand the role that engineering managers have in the organization today. In some organizations, they're very technical. In other organizations, they're not. If they're very technical now, is it still appropriate for them to be very technical in the more agile approach, and therefore they're going to step into certain roles? Are some people people we really want to be technical, and it's important that they're there? Are there other people that really ought to be more 
um, thinking about that bigger picture and, and make sure somebody in the organization is thinking about that bigger picture, right? We generally think of it as an engineering manager role to set standards, nurture teams, do professional development, hire, fire, make staffing decisions, right? That's the kind of stuff that I expect um, some set of engineering managers in the organization to be considering Maybe it's all of them. Maybe some of the folks step into that role and some other engineering managers step into the product owner role or the fellow role where they can be more influential, right? And so a lot of organizations I think we see, Earl, haven't necessarily thought through that journey when they started into Agile. And now they've been Agile for a year or five (laughs) or more and are still kind of struggling to get the success they expected because there was some misalignment happening with how the engineering managers went through that transition. Well, here's a summary, kind of a summary question from Brian. Um, What are your suggested best practices?